How you doing? Here's what we're going to do. We're going to demonstrate the beast notcher for you and some of its features. Um, essentially, um, it's a very heavy duty machine. She weighs just under 50 pounds. I think it's 48, 49 pounds. She's designed to make bins, I mean make notches inside bins. So for instance, you'd be able to clamp tubing onto the machine and put a notch on the outside. Let's say you're doing your door bars in your stock car. Well, good luck notching those on just about everybody else's notcher except for this one, including our other models won't handle it either. This one will handle it fairly easy and we're going to demonstrate that. She's also got the ability to offset notch and this is very popular with your sprint car boys because a little known fact is that if you notch piece two and put it together, that's one that's the way most people do it. However, if you take half partial notch out of the top, lay the other tube in it like you'd build a Lincoln logs, weld it up, you get about a 30% stronger joint, you know? So you'll see that a lot in sprint cars because they're going for the ultimate light weight frame and they need the strongest possible notches. This machine will handle that. It will also handle um, up to three inches tubing, you know, and um, what else we got here? Uh, 60, actually 55 degrees of adjustability this way. The adjustability up and down, I will show you in a minute, but essentially you break the nut loose and you go up down. All of our machines are made with um, ground and polished stainless steel rods. We run American made Torrington or fastener needle bearings. American made, that's the key. <laughs> so anyway, put it in there, very smooth action, everything like that. Um, on this machine, you'll notice the yellow markings here. Uh, don't get excited, we just did that for the video. If you actually buy one of these, it won't be there. However, in the video you can't see the black markings, but in the real life you can, so don't please don't call and say, hey, where's my yellow markings at? Uh, we'll just send you some paint, you know? Anyway, what we're gonna do, let's make the first notch, let's do the standard 90 degree notch. And what we're gonna do, right back here in the little rod right here, she's all degreed off, zero to 55 degrees. So we're gonna bump it to zero degrees. Well, I'll tell you if it's zero. Now it's zero. Let's pop it down. Put a pretty good bite on it too, because she'll try to move on you a little bit if you don't watch out. Um, anyway, what we're gonna do is let's notch the end of this pipe right here. This is 134 wall, inch and a half tubing. What we got, another feature on this machine here, is it comes with two of these things here. And what that, this is what's going to allow us to clamp the tubing to the fixture, clamp it up here. Basically, this is what makes it so versatile. Um, we hold the patent on this particular design here, and that's part of the feature right there. You know. Anyway, what we're going to do, we're going to load the tubing up, and we're going to back off the little T-nuts right here. And we're going to essentially, what you want to do, you don't want to make a full notch. You don't want to put the tubing halfway in the, the, in the um, hole saw. There's no reason. The, the best thing you could do is look at the hole saw where it is and line it up on the ID of the tubing. And if you do that, you'll actually get yourself a little built-in chamfer for welding. So you don't have to do quite as much grinding later on. Now what we're going to do, we're going to take a common drill, half inch drill. It, to be honest with you, it doesn't take much drill. We've actually used the cheapest one a JC Penny sold one time and it worked out pretty well. You're going to want to use a little bit of lubricant on it because, you know, high speed steel saw or whatever. By the way, the saws are purchased from um, Home Depot. Do not get tricked into buying $80 hole saws. It's a waste of money. These things are like eight or nine dollars. You'll get maybe 200 bins per notch. Um, I'll tell you what, let's move that in just a hair more. From this angle, it looks a little shy. How about right there? All right. Um, also, some of these, these uh, I can't remember what those saw, saws are called, one punch or whatever, they're no good. You cannot get long hole saws. So if you're doing a great angle, you're going to bottom out the hole saw. In that case, what you're going to do is you're going to whip out your chest your tan locks, you're going to retract this hole saw, you're going to bend the metal back, and you can continue on. It's, it's actually easier done than said. All right, so let's go. What you're going to do, we're going to feed in at a steady pressure. All of our machines in JD Squared are recommended to be used um, horizontally. This way, gravity's not helping you out because if gravity helps, um, gravity has no feel for the teeth and the blade, so it'll just rip, you know, rip right in there, which could rip your teeth off. This way, I can feel how much feed I'm going to get. So let's get going. We're going to get her going. That's half of it. That's the other half right there. Stop it. Take her out of there. And what you're going to end up with is your notch right there. See what I was talking about right there? I don't know if the video show it, but you see what I'm seeing? We can weld right in there. Nice fillet weld. Everything looks real good, you know? All right, that's that. All right, let's move on to the next feature, claim to fame. A lot of people love this feature. 
especially if you're a stock car builder. We want to put a notch in the middle of the bin, right? We want to put it right out here, as if we were welding door bars onto our car. What we're going to do, we're going to load it in the bender, and we're going to eyeball it right there. And what we need to do is, first, we're going to have to readjust the rod. All the rods are drilled out with multiple holes, and what this will allow you to do is set the hole that you're going to need to get the um, to get the T handle here to be able to grip down on. You're going to put it in, going to adjust it out. Uh, ba -da -ba -da. Sing to yourself while you're doing it. All right, let's get down here and let's see where we're at. Now you're probably going to pre-mark this, but since we're just doing a quickie video, we're just eyeballing it. All righty, we'll put that right there. Now this one over here, I already pre-adjusted, it's in the right hole. Um, you can put it wherever you want, it doesn't matter. I don't quite have it horizontal. What some fabricators do, let's say you were going to do about 20 of these bars, you're not going to want to do it this way. What you're going to want to do is get yourself some wood blocks, cut them to the height, set it underneath the tubing, put the tubing in, that way you just fire them in, fire them in. You know? Once again, we hit our little WD-40 on there, let her rip. And let's knock that off, preferably without cutting myself. But voila, you got yourself a notch and a bend. You know, piece of cake. Now, we could have made that notch further down, it wouldn't have mattered. Um, that's that feature right there. Offset notching, um, I'm not going to actually notch it for you. You've already seen two notches, but let me show you how it would be adjusted. What you would do, you have a little note, a bolt over here, I'm sorry, break the bolt down. And once again, your scale on the side over here will tell you how high you are. So let's say we were notching three inch tubing and we wanted a 50% offset. We would move up to the inch and a half mark, relock it back down, and you can see that we are considerably above the center line of the tubing. Now, if we moved it down to the three quarter inch mark, we'd be dead in the middle of this. You make the notch away you go. That's pretty much the, the beast right there. 